Yeah, folks, it's Coach Simmons here again, and I know I'm playing dumb right now, but I'm going to talk about HBCUs. How to get them into the playoffs. And I know right now, FCS fans are kind of thinking HBCUs, they're going to wreck up our shop. But no. This is going to be good. This is going to be a way. I want to talk about Southern University, Grambling. <laughs> and I want to talk about a way we can actually get Southern into the playoffs without changing Celebration Bowl. Matter of fact, so get your Hayden ready. I know you want to talk to Crash. And for North Dakota State fans, you come out here too. This will involve you. We can all make money if we eat together. So go ahead and get behind the tree. Get your, get your fingers cracked. Get your beer out. Go ahead and get your, get your, your chips. We treat this like two fat boys in the gym. It's time to get this work in. Yeah. I done fucked up. But this is going to be something that make you think. College football's best teams will bash into each other as usual during the regular season. Then, after the ninth full week of games, the new College Football Playoff Selection Committee will release its first Top 25 poll on October 28th. Payouts paid by cities who want to host them. In fact, we're going to go a little more than this one right here. We're going to go the 18 bowl game system. Playoffs, if you want to call it. Eight teams total. The first bowl that will be involved in this system. I told you to crack your knuckles. You down with you folks? You gotta have four regions. My, my system, it's not perfect, but you know what it's gonna be? It's gonna be a freaking option. We're tired of people saying, well, we can't do this, we can't do that, but they give you no alternative. So, this one being said, I have four hub locations. North, well, Great North Midwest. I have Cali, West Coast. I have Southeast and Northeast. One of the hub cities, because in that area, I'm not playing outdoors, will be North Dakota. Whatever team is picked as number one seed, we're gonna have four host seeds to play four at-large seeds. Whatever team of the North, or the, the number one host seed in that region, close to that region, will play in North Dakota. Now that may suck if you have like, you know, Montana's number one seed, and people think, well, if North Dakota's an at-large seed, they're gonna play in North Dakota. No, they get shipped out. So another option, but like I said, just to have the best team from that region that's picked to host in that stadium. The second one, with any move this big to a bowl game, playoff game, hybrid system, you've got to get LA involved with it. But I don't want to get too big of a stadium because it looks bad on TV. LA has opened up a brand new Bank One Stadium for the LA FC, the MLS team. We even hold 22,000 plus fans, which is bigger than the FC Championship game. If you're gonna have a bowl system, a playoff system, this can be a def definite hub. Definite hub to start off the whole thing with. After this, 
go ahead and get other cities involved as well. But LA is the first one. Today, the NCAA announcing the next five years worth of sites for championship tournaments. Of the hundreds of locations, the Carrier Dome wasn't chosen. News Channel 9's Josh Martin details the economic impact tonight. $118 million has been invested into the Carrier Dome to bring a new modern game day experience. Despite that investment, though, the NCAA decided to pass on Syracuse as a host site for NCAA basketball tournament games. 450 host sites for all sports were announced on Wednesday. The Carrier Dome wasn't one of them. It looks like SU won't have men's March Madness here until at least the year 2027. The university telling us it did submit an application to host NCAA men's basketball regional games, which it has hosted in the past, most recently in 2015. We reached out to the NCAA to see if it could provide context as to why the Carrier Dome was turned down we're still waiting to hear back. This decision is a huge blow for our community. With new revenue sources needed due to this pandemic, hosting a regional would have been a slam dunk. According to the folks over at Visit Syracuse, a men's basketball Sweet 16 weekend would easily bring in $20 million of revenue. With fans of teams playing here, staying in Syracuse for two, three, sometimes even four nights. Josh Martin, News Channel 9. Before I get any beef or drama or killing, you don't know what you're talking about, you dumb ignorant bastard. There has not been a team ranked lower than eight to win the FCS championship. You gotta have four stadiums. I have North Dakota, I have Syracuse, I have New York, and you gotta get the South. ATL. Reason why I didn't pick Mercedes Benz Stadium is one, Hank Aaron was here. I love my history. But two, I don't want to confuse it with Celebration Bowl. <clears throat> We're trying to leave an option. Reason why I want this to start in 2026 because that's when the contract for the Celebration Bowl ends. The top eight teams are picked to participate in a bowl game system. If by that time, the SWAC decides they hate, we are actually picked to be in this bowl game, we can opt out of Celebration Bowl and have two games in Atlanta Instead of one, or the MEAC the same way. You can keep your the bowl, keep it separate, but you have the option to participate in the playoffs. And by only having eight game, eight teams play, you can push the playoffs back in the middle of the FCS bowl season. So no games need to be moved. No championships need to be moved. We won't even pick the eight teams until the weekend before the Celebration Bowl. It's more money. More money more money, more money. So let's say you have Kennesaw State here as one of the teams that are picked. First Jackson State. Out West, you have Sacramento State versus Sam Houston State in LA. North Dakota versus Montana in North Dakota State. Fargo. The Syracuse. Villanova versus New Hampshire. The winner would then go on 
for a second round of playing. Once we get those contracts out the way, and it's down to just the celebrate uh, the uh, semifinals and the, and the championship game, we can negotiate anywhere, anywhere for two games. Well, really three. One place will hold the semifinals and the finals. Arizona could be on the list. Cowboy Stadium could be on the list. You can get Ford Field in Detroit as one of the options as well. You can take it to Seattle, Washington. They got a dome that closes. Whatever the highest bidder, you can take it to them. I think the problem we have, not only as a culture of HBCUs, but as a general, we shortchange ourselves. Who's the highest bidder? Screw long-term contracts. Treat it like Super Bowl. Who gives me the most money? And there you go. The winner of LA will play the winner of Atlanta. Winner of New York play the winner of Fargo. The winner of those will play each other the following week. One week off. Four games. If you're lucky. Well, three games if you're lucky. All right. Go ahead and get in the comments. Give me the beat down. I know you're ready. I already know who's going to do it. So I'm waiting for your comments. This goes out to everybody. And the rest of the teams at that top 25, whatever, they didn't make it. Go back to the bowl system. Let each city compete to see who has the money, have a boat.